So, hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how I process my manually uh, created panoramic images from my DJI Mini 2. And the Mini 2 has a auto exposure bracketing option of three exposures. So the three images you see here belong to one stack. So they're like this and then Next one is a little bit darker, next one is a little bit brighter. And this will give you more dynamic range, and I like to work like that. But the DJI does not have a automatic panoramic mode where it uses auto exposure bracketing. So I have to do this by hand. Now I am using a program called Autopano Giga. <laughs> Sorry for the Dutch pronunciation. Um, it's n I don't think it's available anymore, but I think you can still download it uh, at some websites. I think the company stopped uh, selling this product, so I'm still using it. And how it works is you just drag your images on this part of the screen. And, well, let me show you. So what I have to do now is find the images that belong together in one panoramic image. Now, because I use the same pattern for these panoramas, it's easy. It's just 18 images. So in this case, I can just check here where it says 18 items selected in Dutch. And I can drag them over to here. And what you can see is that it created stacks like this little three it means there are three items that are recognized as the same location the same orientation so it stacks them you can change this behavior but it's perfect for this workflow so now i get the next one which is this one then i get the next one which ends right here and because I was at 999, DJI decided to split it and start over again. So I have to do some control shuffle here. No problem. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, great. So what I have now, let me remove this part of the screen. So what I have now is one, two, three, four panoramic images with each 18 images in stacks of three and I can click this detect button and it will generate a panoramic image and it doesn't look good right now but that will change soon so I will do that for all four you don't have to do it like this but it works the fastest so that's how I like to work and then I click this edit button and you can see how it will render the panoramic image but I want to change the projection settings because I don't like this curved thing here and what I usually like is a little planet projection setting but then I like to keep the horizon straight so it will be like straight here and what i usually do is give it a little squeeze which gives a lot more resolution usually about halfway is good and then i apply this change and then i have to crop it because there is like a lot of stuff that you don't want in the final image you can tweak it a little bit and then you say OK, apply. And then you go to the render tab, which is right here. Oh, let's drag it onto this screen, which is recorded. And what I like to do, let me grab the other one, is check when it was recorded, captured which is today at 11.48, okay. 
So I want to name it like that, like 2004, 26, underscore, and then I name it Pano, because that's the area that I'm photographing. So this way I get a nice organized file list and that are ordered in date already. Now there's one thing I'm changing here because I don't want the panoramic output. I want the layers because I want to have the three exposures separately. So then I say just render and it starts the render. Now this does not take a very long and I'm recording now so I'm just doing one but normally I would go back to my to the to the this screen like the main screen and start editing the second one and the third one and the fourth one but I will now just finish one completely so this takes some time but I will skip this in post okay ready and what we have now is three images with various exposures. The first one looks like this, and then one that's darker, and then one that's a little bit brighter. Okay, I use my photo editor, which is Affinity Photo, to merge these three panoramic images. And here it is. And I make sure I go to new HDR merge, which is the import tool for multiple exposed images. And then I check this automatically remove ghosts. And I hope that it will do a good job in fixing that minor error that we saw. So now I have selected the three images and I say, okay, do it. And then it will do its magic, I hope. And again, this takes some time, so I might skip it. I have some presets in my merge tool, and I think I like this one. Maybe this one. Hmm. This one, I think. Let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah, actually, it worked quite well in removing the ghosts. So. And some argue you don't need this auto exposure bracketing, but there was quite a bit of dynamic range between the foreground and the sky. And also I like to have more tonal information, so this tool can do a better job. And when I'm happy, I just say, I have to remember which one, because I want to process them with the same preset. And then I say, apply. It's gonna tone map your image, your panoramic image. And there you have it. This is the processed version of this manual auto exposure bracketed panorama from my DJI Mini 2. And this is just a, like a simple one, so it really increases the resolution. But you can also like create this really big wide images like this one for example which is massive and i have even bigger ones so yeah i like to use my mini 2 this way and the workflow that i have just showed you is very efficient i can process these images quickly the only thing that is important is that you somehow can quickly recognize the beginning and end of a new panorama so what I like to do, if I remember that, is just make a different picture in between. So you can easily recognize it in the, um, the big pile of images. Now in this case it's always 18 and you can see from like the horizon, it's three below the horizon and three with the horizon. So it's easy to recognize, but if, you're, if there are a lot of images and they're not always the same amount per panorama, it's... I think it's handy to leave, to at least take one shot, and that will be three files 
in between so you can recognize there's a change okay that's it 